Hi there guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to mount this vertical column radiator in this position here. It's a floating radiator setup, so the, the pipes are coming straight out of the wall. Sometimes they come from the bottom, sometimes they come from the top. This is probably considered one of the hardest ways of mounting a radiator because the valves at the bottom have to be in exactly the right position. But it's really not that hard. I've got all of the tools here with me and I'm going to be going through exactly step by step how to mount a radiator, make sure you do it properly make sure the radiator is actually uh, of good condition before you put it on the wall because some of these things can get bent in delivery. I'm going to be starting with the radiator in its condition and then I'm going to be moving on to exactly how to mount the radiator. The tools that you're going to need for this project, a screwdriver with the correct screwdriver bit for the screws that you're going to be screwing to the wall. This is a size 5 screw by 60 millimeters length, a pilot uh, drill bit for the screw, some jointing compound, tape measure, a monkey wrench, pencil, adjustable screwdriver, a pipe cutter for cutting the pipes to the right size, a bit of wire wall to clean the pipes, the angle uh, valves. This is a, in this particular case, I'm going to be uh, mounting a floating radiator because it's coming straight out of the wall. So I want an angled valve to go into the into the valve and then into the side of the radiator. But uh, it's pretty self-explanatory if you know where you're going to be mounting uh, the pipes, putting the pipes in. You, you either want a straight one um, or an angled one. Then also something to put the radiator on to make sure it's in the right position before it goes onto the wall. I'm gonna be sticking it on a piece of wood and on top of this box and then leveling it with these shims to get it to the right level, left and right, to make sure it's level against the side of, side of the radiator and the wall and also the bottom to the top. So you want a spirit level for that. And the first thing you wanna check when you get the radiator out of the box is that it's, it's actually level left and right and top and bottom. So get it onto a piece of ground that is level. Get someone to hold it for you. This, level, this radiator is actually standing up on its own, so that's all right, but check the ground is level, and then check the sides. So this is just to make sure that it's not been dropped in transit and is skewed um, while it's been delivered, because that could say that the radiator has been damaged. So that's all level. Once you've done that, then you need to drain the system. So the central heating system is on a loop and you get yourself a bucket and in my particular case I've got a combi boiler which actually on the system you need to have a magnetic filter that basically filters out all of the iron oxide that is in the system and floating debris that has that can be magnetized so this is actually the lowest point in my system and just put a bucket underneath that and then drain it by opening up the valve and release all the pressure into your bucket empty that I've actually already drained my system, so I'm ready to go. But there are plenty of videos on how to drain your central heating system, so I'll just put a link in the description to the best one. Then I'll move on straight onto the mounting of the radiator onto the wall. First thing to do is to drain the, um, the actual copper pipe that is going to be going into your radiator. If you're ready to have it in position, you want to make sure there's no water in it. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'm just using the spanners here. Just let it drain out. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side and take this off and then basically put the radiator here and put it in the right position. So now get your box of valves and pick out the two spigots that will be going into the valves themselves. So these basically go into here and grip in and they also thread into the radiator. But you want to make sure this is a watertight seal on the radiator. So another piece of equipment to add to your list is PCFE um, thread sealant tape. Basically the trick to this is to get a nice clean edge. Basically turn the thread the way that you're going to be turning it into the radiator. We're going to be turning it righty tighty, left and loosey. So we're going to be turning it righty and put the thread, the tape on the thread and turn it the way that it's going to go into the radiator. That will mean that the tailing tape, final piece of tape, will be going the opposite direction to the way that the thread will be turning so it won't unravel itself basically when it's being turned into the radio. Wrap this round approximately 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Until basically you can only just see the thread poking through there because what you want to do is make sure this is as watertight sealed as possible and then just snap it off. Do exactly the same with the other one and then we're going to thread this into the radiator. So I'm going to show you that now. So then get your radiator laying on the floor. Take off the protective caps 
and start threading in the uh, spigots. And I've threaded one in here already. Uh, just make sure that the thread is, is clean. There's nothing gonna interfere with the watertight seal. Get a bit of tissue in there. Spin it around a bit, check it. So make sure there's no like dirty bits of metal in there that is gonna affect the seal. And then just start threading this, this in. <laughs> Because we've got quite a lot of tape on there, it's going to be quite resistant, but the tape, tape does crush. It will create a nice watertight seal, and it's better to have a good amount of tape than to have not too little tape, because your whole system, your whole radiator is going to leak otherwise. So I'm going to tighten this up and then go on to the next step. Once that thread is all in there, you know you're going to have a good seal because you've got that whole length of thread in the radiator. So just stop as soon as all that thread is in there, go all the way up to where the nut finishes. Then go over to the other side of the radiator, the top of the radiator, and you should get one of these bleed valves inside the box that comes with the radiator. Basically clean out the spare thread that's left here, and on these, they've got a gasket so you don't need to put any PTFE tape on it, so just literally thread this straight in. And all this is for is just to bleed the air out when you're filling the radiator up. I'm going to give that a quick nip up with the adjustable spanner to tighten up against the surface. It doesn't need to be too tight. That's it. And then also on the other side, there is a pre-fitted block valve here. Then get your valves from your box. The, on the, the inlet will have the thermostat on it. So put the thermostat on the left and the thermostat is the one that will have this screw to it. So that's the thermostat. The other one, on the right, we'll tighten these up slightly so they're sitting like that. And then we're gonna measure the centers of these pipe holes and compare it against the, the ones on the wall, the pipes on the wall to make sure that they're, the pipes are in the right position. We don't need to do any adjustments to them before mounting the radiator. So not too tight, make sure it stays in position. Okay, it's good enough. And then measure the centers of the where the pipe comes out. That's the center there. The center to center here is 548. So now I'm gonna go over to the radiator. So if I measure from where the mount the radiator will be mounted, about 50 centimeters away, five, five centimeters away from the wall to the other center of the radiator. That is also five, that's five four six, but two millimeters out isn't bad. Then grab your one of your brackets, put the protective covers on them. My trick is you put the bracket in the position that it's gonna be, but upside down, and then mount it so that it's as if it's gonna be mounted on the wall, slightly level. Make sure it's in the center, it's in the middle here, in the middle of those bars. Get a tape measure, feel the inside of your valve, and for me, the, the copper pipe will stop where this thread stops here, so I can feel that by just gauging how far away, how deep my finger goes in. So my finger goes into about there, so I'm gonna measure from here to the wall. And this is gonna give me basically the amount of distance that my pipe needs to be extruding out of the wall and needs to go in, in order to go into this um, valve fully. So here we've got 20 mil to the edge of this here, and then we've got 25 mil to the edge of there. So adding those together, we've got 45 mil for the pipe to go into this fully, but I'm gonna add an extra five millimeters on because I wanna make sure that it definitely goes in and there's always a little bit of extra pipe that can be pushed backwards. So I'm gonna say 50 mil extruding from the wall. Get your pipe cutter and wrap it around the pipe coming out of the wall. I've got a little bit of play in my radiators, uh, my pipes, so I'm gonna push it in very slightly, measure out 50 mil, there's my 50 mil. And because I've got a little bit of play, this means that I can push the pipe into the valve once it's set against the wall. I've got a little bit of play here, so if I need to, I can still push a little bit extra. Think about that. If you can't, if you don't have that play, then just make sure you measure it out accurately and you get the right amount that you need to push in. Also get the bucket under there for spillages and just turn this around until it comes off. A little bit of tissue for the excess if you've got carpets. There you go. Once both sides are cut, then get your wire wall. Just pull this out the wall slightly and clean the copper pipe because you want to have a nice clean connection between the olive that's in the valve, pipe that's in the wall. This will give it a nice clean connection and also this will look nice because they're gonna be sticking out of the wall themselves. After you've done that, you wanna put your radiator onto a platform where you, use, using the packers, you raise the radiator up to a position where the holes meet exactly up with the centers but just off to the side. So you can see the center of that pipe is matching up with the center of the valve there. And on this side, 
I've actually had to use a drill and drill out the wall slightly to raise this pipe up because it wasn't level. Um, so it's worth getting a level and putting it on both pipes and make sure that they're level before you finish off with them. This pipe, when it's raised up, will be in a final position that will be level with this valve here. And once you've done that, so you put it off to the side slightly, once you've done that, you then move it into a position where you can put the valves onto the pipe and then we'll actually put the positions for the hangers on the wall. You can see, I've used these packers, quite a lot of them actually, to get it up to the right position. I've used the packers, different sizes of these packers, to get the radiator level uh, vertically up against the wall. So you can see on both sides it's vertically level. It's also level. Usually it would be better to do this with two people, but I've only got myself here, so I'm just being very careful. So now what I'm going to do, put those pipes onto those valves and then uh, slot the, the hangers through the, through the radiator and draw a pencil mark around it and then get my first positions for the, the hangers. So now you can see I've got the radiator in position. The valves have the pipes stuck into them. I've actually had to drill out a little bit of the wall so that the pipes can shift over just so that the radiator is centered in the center of the wall. So I've measured on each side left and right to make sure that it's approximately in the center. Shifted the pipes over and also I've used the packers to make sure that the sides are level. The top is level and then now what we're going to do is take one of these hangers and starting off with the top hanger I'm going to thread it through from the back seat it up against this pulp, this uh, pipe here and then push that up against the wall from behind and I'm going to draw a line around the outside of this square the outside of the square so that when I put it back up against the wall I can put it in exactly the right position to hang the radiator in its current position starting from the top because just the two on the top will hold the radi radiator itself on the wall and the bottom is just extra support. So starting with the top ones, left and right, and then I'm gonna go onto the bottom ones afterwards. those markings on the wall. I've also then gone and put these back on the wall and drawn those uh, hole points out because I'm going to be drawing, uh, drilling pilot holes through here to put the screws in. Uh, but you also want to make sure that the tops of these, these top lines here are level. So this is pretty much level. It might be slightly out if the top of your radio is not 100% level, but that's pretty much level. Uh, for me, so I'm going to say. I'm going to go ahead and start screwing these brackets in. Then once you screw those in, once again, make sure it's level because sometimes if you're using countersink screws like me, the countersink can shift these around. So make sure it's perfectly level. Then we're going to mount the radiator straight on top of the wall there. And we don't need this um, bottom section anymore because it's going to be hung straight on the wall. So we're going to hang it and take this out of the way when we hang it. because this is now mounted on the wall we can do exactly the same with the bottom brackets here just cut them underneath the pipe at the bottom here and push it up against the wall draw that same marking around the, the square bit this is not touching the wall yet because this is in the way so i'm going to thread these in push it up against the wall draw around those square bits take the radiator back off the wall mount those bottom brackets put it all back on again and then i'm going to show you how to do the connection at the pipes because i've got a little secret for you Now before I show you my secret on how to get a nice permanent join on these, what I want you to do is to take the nut off there and also slide the o-ring back, put this back in its original position, that's not tightened up enough, and do that on both sides. So once that's mounted on the wall, pushed into the pipes, just before you tighten this up, this nut up, what you want to do is line 
this pipe up here with the with the joint because if it's skewed if it's slightly off like this you're not going to get a very good connection with the olive um, that's inside the nut here firstly line it up straight like it's lined up now tighten up this nut so that's already lined up give it a slight adjustment and then this is what the monkey wrench comes in useful for just gently grip the top here to stop it from moving when you tighten it and i've already tightened this up mostly but i'm just going to give it a little bit more of a nip up a little bit more there to tighten it you'll just want to make sure so you turn this nut until you start getting resistance holding from about this position 10 centimeters away from your spanner and then as soon as you get resistance give it a quarter of a turn from there a full turn of resistance up to the top just a quarter of a turn and do exactly the same on the other side and then here's my little secret for you get yourself some jointing compound which is basically a permanent permanently soft waterproof jointing compound it's designed for threads normally but this will give you a permanent joint between the pipe and the the elbow that's on here and you want to put it before you get the olive to come down you rub it before the olive and after the olive before the olive meets the valve so after the olive meets the nuts that means that um, because you get a lot of expansion central heating joints this particular joint even if there is expansion or if there's a bit of stress in the fact that you, these pipes are not always in exactly the same the right position to go into the joint this will make sure that any movement in this olive will be accounted for that it won't leak so basically just do this on both sides and then tighten the nut up over the olive do exactly the same process for the amount of tightness that is, is on this nut and you should have a very strong joint so just before you tighten it just as i mentioned at the start of this video that extra slack that you had in this pipe you just want to push it in so that all the pipe that can go in is in and then do that final tightening around this jointing compound so i'm going to tell you and i can start feeling i can start feeling resistance now and after now i'm going to give it a quarter of a turn that is a quarter of a turn and that should be enough to seal the pipe but if it's not fully sealed all you have to do is pressurize the system back up and if it's leaking just tighten a tiny bit more the leak should go away but if you over tighten it and it leaks you're stuck because if it's tightening over tightened it means that the olive has squashed the pipe and there's water getting around the outside of the pipe that's been squashed but if it's under tightened the olive is not gripping down on it enough to close the the gap between the olive and the pipe so just turning it a little bit more, we'll got to close that gap and tighten it. So a little is better. So I'm just gonna tighten up the other side, uh, repressurize the system and check if there's any leaks and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Once you've done all that, now we need to repressurize the system. I've got a combi boiler, so it's fairly simple for me. Uh, if you've got a combi boiler, you can just copy exactly what I'm doing. There is a filling loop underneath, underneath the boiler, which fills the cold water in supply into the central heating system. And this is the filler. So you just need to turn this it would take quite a while to actually refill the system but what you want to watch is the pressure gauge at the front here you can see here and we want to fill that up to one bar in pressure and then what i'm going to do is go over to the radiator that is filling up i'm going to bleed the air out of the top of it through the bleed valve until the radiator is fully contained with water come again back to this boiler and refill the system back up to one bar because it will lose pressure as you let the air out so it's just coming up to one bar now. I'm gonna wait until it goes and cuts out all of that green. So I'm gonna leave it at one bar like that, turn it off now. Pull to one bar. I'm gonna go over to this radiator and the bleed valve on this one is at the top right. If you look here, you've got a little bleed valve which you can put a screwdriver into and loosen that off. You hear the air coming out. You can hear that now. So you just want the air to come out until it's completely empty of air and starts peeing out water. But just get yourself a bit of tissue on here and hold it on there until you start feeling water consistently coming out and then tighten it back up again. Now I've actually got a towel on here because quite a lot of water came out before um, it was fully bled. So what you're aiming for is for it to be pissing out without any more air coming out with a consistent stream so if you look there you can see a consistent stream of water now if i turn that off that is now fully bled we can now repressurize the system back up to one bar again so it's actually dropped down quite a lot i had to do this twice so it's actually gotten rid of about two bar worth of pressure to fill that radiator but i did it by filling it up to one bar. And we should be able to tell pretty quickly whether there's any leaks in the system. Make sure they're completely dry and then rub your finger underneath the joints. And if there's any liquid on them, then you know there's a slight leak. But at the moment, nothing here. If you want to be sure enough, you can wait about five minutes just to see if there's anything coming through, any drips. So there's the finished result, a floating mounted anthracite column radiator. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. 
it'll be really helpful, a lot more people will see the video. Uh, and if you like the style of these videos, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. I've got loads more stuff on, for example, how to epoxy surface finish a kitchen worktop to give it that nice glossy surface there. This is actually a concrete worktop. Um, and if you like the radiator that I've used in this video, you can actually click on the link in the description for the exact eBay shop that I bought this from. It's actually an unbranded product straight from the manufacturer. Um, and they're actually pretty cheap and very good quality. So as you saw in the start of the video, they're perfectly level when they arrive. And also the, the valves and the PTFE tape and the jointing compound, all of that stuff is uh, listed in the description. So thank you very much for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.